Are you learning anything? <laughs> Are you ready to learn some more? Yeah. All right. One of the reasons that I come and talk is that it gives me an opportunity to clarify some of the theory behind the avatar materials. And I hope I can do that today. At the bottom of what we can know for sure are things that are physically obvious. They are generally agreed upon and they can be tested. And this includes the whole body of knowledge about matter, energy, force, and motion, the physical sciences. You can't walk through brick walls. You can test that. And um, ice melts at a certain temperature. You can test that too. And you can't jump off a building and fly simply by believing you can. And just take my word for that one. <laughs> we live within certain physical limits. And if you violate those limits, there are swift and sudden consequences and often pain. So if you want to study the obvious, you can do it by looking for patterns that repeat and that can be tested. And after a lot of looking, predicting, and testing, you will end up with some information that can be called knowledge. Knowledge consists of facts. And a fact is something that is obvious to anyone who looks or wants to test it. It's a provable bit of information. There is a body standing here is a fact. And a fact when proven with indisputable, indisputable evidence is something that a sane mind will believe. And refusing to believe in something that is factual is a symptom of delusion. Now, self-evident facts are called axioms, and they are statements that don't need to be proven because they're taken for granted. For example, two things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. That's an axiom. Truth can be a confusing word. In reference to the physical universe, Truth is determined by factual evidence, but in reference to personal reality, truth is principally determined by certainty of belief or faith. Truth based on certainty is not as immutable as truth based on factual evidence. You can change your certainty and beliefs. And that opens the door to a technology for managing beliefs like Avatar. And if you put truth on a scale, somewhere near the middle there's this crossover point where the criteria for what is true changes from factual to faith. And below the crossover threshold, what is, is. Above the threshold, what is, is what we consider is. Below the threshold, we perceive things as they are. 
a brick wall is a brick wall. Above the threshold, something else is taking place. What we believe about the brick wall, our primary, will color our perception with a consideration, and that consideration, if we allow it, will generate a reaction or an emotional experience. So there's a process here that goes through some distinct stages. Perception, colored by a belief, results in a consideration, which generates a reaction or an experience. It happens very quickly. And if you reduce a person's awareness, the perception part will drop out, and you'll just have belief resulting in a consideration, which generates a reaction. And if you reduce a person's awareness even more, the belief will become unconscious, and you'll just have a consideration that generates a reaction. And that's how many people operate. So let me give you an example using a brick wall as a metaphor for external stimuli. At a purely factual level, you perceive a brick wall. It's a wall made out of bricks. No considerations, no beliefs, no reactions. It's just a brick wall. But let's say that somewhere in your past, for some reason, you made a primary that brick walls are ugly. Now your perception of just a brick wall is filtered by that belief, brick walls are ugly, and your consideration is, I don't like it. And you experience a resistance toward the brick wall. You get this? Below the threshold, things are what they are. Above the threshold, things are what we consider them to be. And how we consider them can be traced back to the primaries that we have made. Now, depending upon how self-aware and calm a person is, how inwardly alert they are, they will realize they don't like brick walls. And if they go a little deeper, they will realize that they have negative considerations about brick walls. Going deeper still, they will realize that they have a critical belief about brick walls. And if they really concentrate, they can recall the situation or circumstances that persuaded them to make the primary of the critical belief about brick walls. So you have these levels operating in people's minds. At the bottom is the primary. Above that is a certain belief that was created. Above that are considerations that are generated by that belief. And at the top are the reactions and experiences that arise from a person's considerations. Now, using the avatar tools, a person can change the life pattern at any level that they're aware of. And at the, the deeper the level at which they change the pattern, the more lasting the change is. You can create or discreate reactions. You can create or discreate considerations. You can create or discreate beliefs. Or you can create a new primary and discreate the old primaries as they arise as secondaries. It's important to know on which side of the th threshold of knowledge and belief that you're operating because the technologies are not the same for consciousness as they are for the physical universe. And it can be a serious mistake to confuse them. In exchange for the privilege of operating in the physical universe, you've made some binding agreements with each other about what and how you create or discreate. Thou shalt not discreate brick walls. You, know? you can alter them with force. 
You, know, you can rearrange the particles in space or even change the particles in something out, into something else, but absolutely no poof and it's gone. You know? And the same rules apply to creating. No poof and it suddenly appears out of nothing. Now, at first, this might seem like an awful limitation on creating your own reality, but it really isn't because we need a stable, predictable playground in order to stage our various learning games. And someone put a lot of effort into creating the physical universe, and we have agreed to limit ourselves to shaping or reshaping it by physical technologies. No poofs, you know? <laughs> One poof and you're out of the game, you know? <laughs> Now, if you want to, you can call the brick wall and all the stuff that falls below the knowledge belief threshold shared physical reality. And it's kind of a lifeless reality. I mean, it just is. Um, you look at a brick wall and you go, yep, that's a brick wall. <laughs> and you don't have any considerations about it at all. In fact, when you're not looking directly at it or you're not trying to walk through it or some such thing, the brick wall doesn't even seem to exist for you. Above the knowledge threshold is where you run into subjects like psychology, philosophy, theology, metaphysics, and no surprise, creating your personal reality. And your personal reality consists of the considerations you have made about the brick wall. You might think it's beautiful, or it's ugly, or that it's in your way. Um, it's a major obstruction to your life. I mean, you can blame the brick wall for all of your troubles. And you can pound your fist against it until your hand is bruised. And, and you slump to the ground, a complete victim. That is the personal reality that your beliefs are creating and that you're experiencing. I mean, some people are lying in front of this brick wall, completely done in, you know, ruined, unhappy, depressed, you know, hopelessly victimized. And guess what? The brick wall just goes on sitting there. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the reality that people are creating and experiencing about it. It doesn't care. You know? Hey, what if instead of the brick wall, we put your mother there? or a mean person. Uh, how about the devil himself? You know? Now, are you ready for this? None of them have anything to do with the reality that you're creating and experiencing. I mean, what you are creating and experiencing as your personal reality, be honest, are your own considerations based on your beliefs about the brick wall or about your mother or about the mean person or about the devil? And those beliefs arose from primaries that you made. Now, the good news is that while well, you can't poof in the brick wall or your mother or a mean person, or the devil just disappears, you can, with the avatar tools, magically poof any of your considerations or beliefs or old primaries about the brick wall, or about your mom, or about the mean person, or about the devil, and your life will change. This is called being source. 
Now, the rules that govern your consciousness are not the same rules that govern the shared physical universe. Will your mom, the evil person, or the devil change because you change your beliefs and considerations? Well, only if they were being a certain way in response to how you were being. If so, when you change, they'll probably change too. You see, that's the, that's the bonus for being source. You'll see it a lot. If you were to empty the average human mind and all of its contents, most of what you would find would be mental copies of the physical universe. And these copies have been labeled according to your beliefs. And some of the beliefs you have evidence for. I mean, remember, a fact when proven with indisputable evidence is something that a sane mind believes. But for the most part, the only evidence we have for our beliefs are, is our own subjective certainty. And the fact that our minds contain more beliefs held to due to subjective certainty than due to indisputable objective facts opens the way for us to do something. Subjective certainty is the domain that we're talking about when we speak of creating your own reality or shaping your own experience. I mean, if the brick wall has to disappear or apologize to you in order for you to feel better, <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Or your mom. So the domain that we're addressing is certainty, personal conviction. And it's above the threshold of what passes for factual knowledge. It is personal reality. And the value of managing personal reality is that all of our experiences of life are based on it. So where did your pre-avatar beliefs come from? What conditions caused you to create them? Let me ask you this. How many unanswered questions do you have? <laughs> Is there a God? Is there justice in the universe? What happens when you die? Will good eventually triumph over evil? Is good rewarded? Is evil punished? Is there something more fundamental than the physical universe? Now let me give you my honest answer to these questions. I mean, let me be brutally honest, okay? The fact which no sane mind can help but believe is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's as honest as I can be. I don't know. I don't know is honest, but it's not very satisfying. I, mean, I don't know is not a comfortable frame of mind. You really want to be thought of as someone who doesn't know. Yep, oh Harry, he doesn't have a clue. <laughs> well, they're right. And I don't only don't know, but I'm becoming more and more suspicious that nobody else knows either. <laughs> now, there are answers that I choose to place my faith in, and there are answers that I am subjectively certain of. But not everyone would agree with those answers. You'll find that you meet a lot of people 
myself included, that are willing to fill in your don't know with their answers. And that may be a deliberate kindness on their part, saving you from I don't know, or they may just be reassuring themselves by getting your agreement, or maybe they have a hidden agenda for getting you to believe certain things. Relieving the pressure of not knowing is the function of faith. Religions comfort your I don't know with divine truth that some extraordinary individual had access to. And you'll probably accept it because, well, one, you don't want to mess with the divine. <laughs> and two, it feels better than saying, I don't know. At the heart of religion is accepting certain answers on faith. We don't know, so we accept an answer on faith. And it might be a good answer, like love your neighbor, or it might be a bad answer, like kill all the unbelievers. You know? So does this begin to give you some idea why so many people are indoctrinated? Answers are valuable even if they are totally made up and they lead to self-sabotaging beliefs. Can you remember getting called on in school and the teacher would ask you a question like, how did the Roman aqueducts contribute to the fall of Rome? <laughs> now, you're not going to say, I don't know. <laughs> You'll make up some answer that sounds really intelligent. <laughs> but the honest answer is, you don't know. <laughs> well, isn't your teacher, in expecting an answer from you, being dishonest? I mean, she'd be happy if you'd recite what is written in the textbook, which you probably never read. <laughs> I mean, did the guy who wrote the textbook really know? I mean, was he there? <laughs> and does he have indisputable evidence, or is he just guessing and asking you to take his answer on faith? This condition of I don't know puts a pressure on people to speculate or to imagine an answer or to accept other people's answers and ultimately to create a primary that they are subjectively certain of and that becomes their belief. How many things have you agreed to as facts that were the opinion of someone who honestly didn't know and who was guessing? An even better question is, how many things have you agreed to about yourself or someone else that were nothing more than the opinion of someone who honestly didn't know. You know. So let's stop kidding ourselves and just wake up and acknowledge that we're carrying around a lot of beliefs that are someone else's guesses at an answer. You know, add to those guesses the information that family, friends, teachers, and society wanted you to believe because it served their purpose, and you have modern education. <laughs> Will science and religion ever agree? Do miracles really happen? Who invented life? <laughs> what is truth? I mean, you already know, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know is the bedrock beneath your certain truth. It's the condition that exists in the moment before you decide upon a belief. And it's the condition that you must revisit before you can truly change a belief. I don't know clears a space in your personal reality to create and explore new beliefs. I don't know motivates 
quests and adventures. What would it be like to live in an enlightened planetary civilization? Here's the key question and the whole reason for taking personal responsibility. Is your life better, happier, more successful, or safer if you place your faith in one belief over another belief? Now, most people would say, yes, believing in certain things makes my life better than believing in other things. Better is the criteria criteria that they use to shape their reality. And it takes a lot of experience and wisdom to really determine what better is. And we'll explore some of that next month in the second part of this talk. Here's one of those questions that I started out with. Is there justice in the universe? I don't know but I would prefer to believe that there is. And believing in something doesn't make it true for everyone, and someone else might believe in something different. And getting into an argument over our beliefs means that we're both being dishonest, because if we were honest, we would both agree that we adopted our beliefs as a solution to I don't know. When we perceive that the only difference between us is our beliefs, and that the beliefs can be created or discreated with ease, the right and wrong game will wind down, a co-create game will unfold, and world peace will ensue. Bringing about this realization is the mission of Avatar. I mean, prior to doing Avatar, a lot of people have no idea that they can control what they believe. They are indoctrinated with beliefs that serve someone else's interests, and they are punished by their own conscience if they question those beliefs. So taking personal responsibility for your beliefs is a big step, sometimes even a dangerous one. It requires enormous courage, compassion, and wisdom. Is it still murder if you kill someone on the orders of your government? Is it still murder if you kill someone in the name of your religion? I mean, for some people, awakening personal responsibility for their beliefs is intensely shameful. And some try to go back to sleep in some way, using alcohol or drugs or work or social norms to numb themselves into unawareness. And in some cases, they will criticize people or groups that encourage personal responsibility because personal responsibility to them feels like guilt and blame. And for many people, they're going to, they need rounds of confession and forgiveness before they even consider personal responsibility. And one of the conditions that we share as human beings is that there are an awful lot of things that we don't know. The world will run smoother when we integrate and admit that. Here's an avatar perspective. I don't really know, but I find that believing certain things makes for better, smoother, and a more enjoyable life. And I also notice that believing in certain other things causes suffering and disharmony. If you live long enough or are able to recall enough past lives, you will get a good idea of what beliefs make people happy, more secure, more in control, and you'll also learn what beliefs lead to suffering. Now, this isn't knowledge. This is wisdom. 
And at the next master's course, we'll go over the stages of awareness leading up to living deliberately and outline a tested criteria for choosing beneficial beliefs. And until then, rely on kindness and compassion as your guides. Contribute to the creation of an enlightened planetary civilization. And know that I love you. <laughs>